So in this video, I want to talk a bit about filters and filter key tracking and how I use it, because sometimes I have the feeling not everyone knows exactly what I do with the filters. So I want to make a video about this and we start by just using here a subtractive synthesizer and we want to lay down just one note, maybe pull down here the volume a bit and just use C3 here, yeah? one note of C3 and we just want to loop this here and we open up the filter. We remove here the filter modulation amount from the envelope here and we increase the sustain and we want to use a saw and we remove here the default uh, modulators and inside of the FX box, we use here an EQ plus just to see what's going on here with the harmonics. So this is how it sounds pretty ugly. And we also switch here the resolution of the EQ to huge. So we can see each harmonic here pretty, pretty clearly. Okay, so now we can use basically here inside of the subtractive synthesizer, we can use the filter to subtract the harmonics. That's how this synthesis kind of type works. So we have um, here a sound with a root a fundamental and a lot of overtones. And we can get rid of all the overtones here by just pulling down a low pass filter until we are left with the yeah, lowest root fundamental frequency here. We can also double click here this and we jump to the middle frequency, which is 262 Hertz, which is basically C3. You can see this down here on the info bar, right? It's C C3. Um, so in here, we also play C3, so that's important. Uh, we can also change here the steepness of the filter. So when we use here LP8, right, you can see we remove even more overtones than just with LP2. It's not that steep, right? So we can remove more overtones by using here a steeper filter. And um, so this is basically how subjective synthesis works. So now the interesting part is we can target individual overtones here. So let's say I want to um, I want to make a bass sound. And the bass sound has, of course, a root, a sub, and then overtones. Um, so what I want to do most of the times with the bass is I want to amplify the second harmonic or the second partial on in the first harmonic. I think this is called the first harmonic. This is called fundamental. This is the first harmonic. Um, so the first harmonic is something I want to amplify in the bass because I want to make the bass audible in, let's say, uh, weak speakers or headphones, right? Uh, so sometimes people just use an EQ for that. And I use sometimes these filters for that. So what I do then is basically I use a low pass, maybe LP3 to get rid of all the overtones. And then I want to amplify the second uh, partial here or the first harmonic. And I do this by just going instead of C3, I go for C4. So C4 now is twice the frequency as this one, which is exactly the first uh, harmonic. So now I can use the resonance here and increase the resonance on this uh, first harmonic. So it's exactly, it gives me exactly what I want without using an EQ. So I just amplify this and you can hear this better inside of headphones. So now the problem is when you change, of course, here the key to a different frequency, uh, the relationship between the filter frequency and the frequency of the root or the fundamental is completely off and of course all the harmonics. Uh, so that's why we have key tracking. So key tracking here on 100% basically tracks the uh, frequency of the node. So when I hit or double click this here, I target again the root or fundamental frequency, even though it shows 262 Hertz because the key tracking is on, it changes basically this frequency always to the frequency of the node. So instead of 262 Hertz here, I have basically a different frequency. I have the frequency of, I don't know what, what this is here. Um, 62 Hertz. I don't know. Is this, is this C1? C1 is 65.4 Hertz. Yeah. So that's the frequency I'm targeting, right? 
So I can also, uh, let's say, go here for SVF and use a notch and completely remove this fundamental frequency here with the notch filter. And uh, because we know that from the rumble channel, uh, the drive knob here also adds some overtones or harmonics. So we can go down here with the drive knob to remove the fundamental even more, right? So you can see we remove here this frequency, even though it's not 262 hertz because of key tracking, we follow here the frequency of this node and then we target basically this fundamental. And we can bring this up and we still remove this here, go up, we still remove the fundamental frequency. So this is basically key tracking and how I use it. I can remove and target certain, certain harmonics inside of the sound. So back again to our bass here, let's go to C1 again. And we want to push basically the second harmonic or the second partial and the first harmonic. So here I go to C4, which is twice the frequency of C3. And then I push up here uh, the resonance. And you can see we basically bring out here um, the second partial, yeah, to make it more audible inside of the uh, inside of headphones or weak speakers. Um, we can then maybe switch this back here to a cell and key filter and can also here increase the steepness of the filter. So we remove more overtones. So these both stay in place, right? And we can work pretty precise with these kind of filters inside of Bitwig Studio. Um, it, it gets harder if you want to target different harmonics instead of the first and the second one, right? So this is easy. You just go from C3 to C4 just to use or just to target this frequency here. Uh, we can also say, um, let's go back to SVF. When you want to remove certain uh, partials here. So this is the second one. The third one is 700 something. We can actually calculate this here, but we need a calculator for that. <laughs> So we take the root frequency, 262, um, and then times the partial number. So let's say I want to target here um, the second one, third one, fourth one, right? So I times four. So go to this frequency. Uh, we can just copy this. Um, Control V. And then we target basically here exactly this partial, right? Um, that's a bit cumbersome because you have to calculate it. Um, maybe you can remember certain harmonics um, or you can remember the notes for these things, right? So maybe you say C3 is the first, this is the second, and then we, I think G, probably G4. Yeah, this this harmonic. So basically go up then and or use the root frequency and then um, times the number, basically. This is how you calculate it. It's much easier inside of the grid, of course. We can just disable here this um, filter and we can use an FX grid. So we basically do the same thing in here. Use an SVF. Put this on the root frequency. Resonance goes down. And then we have the key tracking here enabled. So we can remove here the fundamental. Uh, so in here we can just use a pitch in. And instead of the key tracking here, we switch key tracking off and we use the pitch in and uh, up here the amount. So it's the same thing as before. But now we can use a ratio uh, module in between here. And then we can target basically each of these harmonics. Fundamental. First harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, and so on, right? So with the ratio thing here, you can target these things and can calculate basically the right frequency. And because we use here the pitch in, um, this change, changes, of course, again, with the, with the note frequency. So you can still see here, we remove this partial. So this is basically how I use filters sometimes. Um, instead of using an EQ. You can also use an EQ if you want to, right? So you can say basically, let's go out of this here. Um, you have to go to C3 first. Um, you have to 
um, tweak this on C3. So we have here basically C3 and we have all the overtones and we want to target exactly this frequency, right? So we pull this down here with an EQ. And then we can bring in here a key track and then we modulate basically the shift input by exactly 60. Maybe you can type this in here on the left side, 60, right? Um, so now when we move this note here around, you can see also the EQ shifts around and targets again the right harmonic. But this only works if you tweak it here on C3, which is the middle frequency here in Bitwig Studio. And then you can, yeah, EQ your multiple things in the sound and you get the right frequency then if, when you shift the note around. So you can do this in multiple uh, ways in Bitwig Studio. And like I showed you in the beginning here with the filter, you can already do so much without using actually an EQ and it's inside of the, of the synth itself. So it's also part of polyphony. So if you use multiple keys, right, with multiple sounds and different frequencies, um, the filter also is polyphonic. And you have then on different sounds, um, different filters with different frequencies targeting the right frequency for these harmonics. So it's pretty neat to have. And also inside of the grid, it's pretty nice to do here with the ratio. And then of course, in the end with the EQ plus is also possible. But then again, keep in mind, this is not polyphonic. This is basically only monophonic and it works basically for one key at a time. So if you have like a chord sound, right? This is then EQ'd basically on, yeah, of the result of the sum of the sound, not like for individual sounds or into individual keys. So that's important to know. And um, yeah, I wanted to basically explain to you how I use these filters sometimes here when I type in different um, notes or different frequencies, because in my brain, um, this is how it works. I target basically individual frequencies sometimes and I think, oh, I need to increase here the volume of the first harmonic, right? To make it more audible for bass sounds or I want to remove certain harmonics because I know it sounds great or I want to make room for a snare drum at a certain point, right? Um, so this is how I use it and I think you should use it too because it's pretty powerful. Um, that's it for this video. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Hit me up with the feedback in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.